Mark Reason last updated 0500-2210-2017, Phil, Walter Jitty, images all black, Kane Hames made a rare protest on a political issue when playing for the NC Maori in 2016. Phil Waltergetty images former Prime Minister John Key rarely missed an opportunity to be pictured with the All Blacks. John Selkirk All Blacks hooker Anton Oliver in the Nelson Mandela's cell during the tour of South Africa in 1996. Bill Streicherusa Today San Antonio Spurs head coach Greg Popovich, left, has been a trenchant critic of U.S. President Donald Trump. Rugby opinion So, did Aaron Smith take to a knee during last night's national anthem in protest at the tragically high levels of child abuse in our Maori community? Did Kieran Reid grab the microphone at the end of the match and angrily denounce the housing shortage in New Zealand? And did Sam Whitelock throw his water bottle into the VIP section of the stand in condemnation of the state of the country's rivers? Well, no, the last I can remember hearing from this country's sportsman was when Israel Dag Natalie tweeted on the day of the 2014 election, just voted for it, John Keepham and the national party all the best for tonight blue all day national eric murray whom his rowing partner hamish bond cheerfully called a moron and the late jonah lom who also improperly tweeted their support for key three years ago it put you in mind of american golfers who are all exceedingly rich and all exceedingly republican are our well-off all blacks just another adjunct of the national party john key certainly treated them as his personal pets no handshake opportunity was ever passed up and the fragrant Judith Collins admitted that the then Prime Minister adored Richie McCaw, which was sweet. Key's bromance was so sickeningly saccharine that Labour's Annette King voiced her concern that the national team was starting to look like the Prime Minister's All Blacks. Read more Kane Hames warned over slogan Popovich takes the fight to Trump time to crush Wallaby dreams the pain driving the Wallabies but what now should our sportsmen and women be seen but not heard do sport and politics mix or might it be refreshing if some of them talked about a little more than following processes and being in the right mindset are the current All Blacks just a flock of dumb rugby sheeple herded from game to game by Steve Hansen or might they actually have something intelligent to say might there be another Anton Oliver in the mix Kane Hames wore a protest slogan when playing for the Maori and was promptly slapped down by his coach and by New Zealand Rugby, lest powerful financial sponsors be offended. Add feedback I ask the question, because what is going on in the United States right now is peculiarly interesting. It started when the San Francisco quarterback Colin Kaepernick knelt during the national anthem in protest at the nation's treatment of black people. Kaepernick has since lost his job. The NFL hierarchy is notoriously right-wing and is suing the NFL for collusion not to hire him because of his race protest. The former Minnesota Vikings punter Chris Clue put it rather succinctly when he told the Guardian NFL coaches RF, in cowards who think a children's game is more important than the health of the country that allows that game to exist. They preach leadership all the time in the locker room but clearly their idea of leadership is bending a neck to the fascist boot which come to think of it is how they run their teams. Agree with Clue. Or not, it is still a magnificently articulate diatribe that made me yearn for something similar from our own sportsmen and women. New Zealand rugby is not exactly comparable to the fascist empire of the NFL but it still has strong right-wing authoritarian tendencies and very much likes its players and the national media to toe the party line. Maybe the NZR wears more of a fascist sneaker, but it still presses down on the neck. I mean can you imagine if Lima Sopoaga decided to have a go at racism in New Zealand rugby like Kaepernick? I don't suppose the jersey would stay on his back for very long. Clauses would be invoked hokum about bringing the game into disrepute and the like. It is interesting that the British government is insisting that the nation's universities allow free speech, a message that has yet to reach many of the world's sports bodies. And listen to this letter from America. Greg Popovich, the much-respected coach of the NBA's San Antonio Spurs and a forces veteran, was so appalled by the latest utterances of his president that he rang up a magazine columnist to unload. Popovich said this week this man in the Oval Office is a soulless coward who thinks that he can only become large by belittling others. This has of course been a common practice of his, but to do it in this manner and to lie about how previous presidents responded to the deaths of soldiers, is as low as it gets. We have a pathological liar in the White House, unfit intellectually, emotionally, and psychologically to hold this office, and the whole world knows it, especially those around him every day. The people who work with this president should be ashamed, because they know better than anyone just how unfit he is, and yet they choose to do nothing about it. Agree or disagree, it gets you thinking and reacting. He's an interesting bloke, Popovich. He grew up in a poor, multiracial housing project called Sunnyside. Yes, well, I don't suppose any irony was intended. 
but people rubbed along because almost everyone had a job at the steel mill. No longer, no longer in America, no longer in New Zealand. More and more coaches need to be part social worker. Popovich calls race the elephant in the room. Maybe poverty is the rhinoceros. Popovich has given his players the book Between the World and Me, written as a letter from the author to his son about what it is to grow up black in America. Popovich has taken the team to a screening of Spike Lee's Chirac, a film in which a group of Chicago women withhold sex from their men in protest at yet another shooting. It is based on a play by Aristophanes, but just maybe a black teenager might have as instinctive an understanding of the film's message as a classical scholar. And so I wondered, might a New Zealand coach take the squad to Rob Mokiraka's shot bro, confessions of a depressed bullet and what it is like to suffer from depression in a community that is loath to acknowledge the illness. And might the NZR, instead of looking for a Pacifica to put on the board, actually appoint a Maori or Pacifica coach to succeed Steve Hansen. Spurs forward Lamarcus Aldridge said he had never had a coach who tried to help him think about things outside basketball. And do you know what the team love Popovich for it? There were perhaps hints of something similar evolving at the Chiefs, but it has been blacked out by scandal. And yet I wonder if this country still think politics is a bit of a dirty word. It's necessary, but it's not something we talk about, especially at the rugby table. I would love to hear some of our coaches and all blacks have their say about the state of the nation if only to get the discussion going. Winston reckons we need to blow up the capitalist engine before the division of wealth becomes even more obscene. But I wonder what Ryan Crotty has to say about that. Sunday Star Times